I'm no scientist or electrician or motorhome expert. And it's quite frightening, really. I'll probably live longer too. <laughs> really? Mm, well, actually, in terms of statistics. <laughs> <laughs> so if it was to explode, it would hit me, my yeah. backside first. Yeah, you'd go. I mean, I have got an explosive backside. So it's mission aborted, sadly. Hello, and welcome to Escape in the Motorhome. My name's Daz, and this is B. We're a home education, home working family who recently bought a motorhome to go on great adventures. So join us as we take the family on some wild walks, some wild and not so wild camping, explore our surroundings, and try new things whilst getting to grips with living and working in our new small space. We experience the highs and lows of motorhome life. And if you enjoy our channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. Everybody. Welcome back to Daz Talks Kit. Now, as you know, I love talking kit. In fact, I heard some people the other day saying I'm full of kit. And today I am. We've collected the post and I've got three things for you. Uh, these were all bought directly from AliExpress as a bit of an experiment. First off, this biggest one in here is actually an internal. Oh, there goes some of the little suckers. Internal thermal blind. Now it doesn't look from the packaging size, it really didn't look like big enough for my Ducato, Fiat Ducato windows. However, as I unfold it, it is quite big and we'll have a go at fitting that later on. As you can see, it's not particularly thick, so I'm guessing the silver backing is what keeps the heat in. Whereas the window covers I've got with the van when I bought it are like a duvet, but they go on the outside. And the problem with that is Especially this time of year, they'll get rained on uh, or there's a lot of dew on them. So when you bring them into the van in the morning, um, they need somewhere to dry out and there's not a lot of room in here for that sort of thing. So we've gone for internals. This internal blind kit for the Fiat Ducato was actually listed as about just over £10 on the AliExpress website. However, with shipping and taxes, it actually worked out close to about £25, which if you went on Amazon or somewhere else, it's probably not far off what you pay anyway. And you'd get it in a shorter lead time. That took about um, three weeks to turn up. Okay, number number two. So here we have it, we've got a voltmeter. This was about £5.50 online. Um, it feels a little bit light and perhaps a little bit cheap, but I'm only gonna use it occasionally. I've never had it in my arsenal of tools up until now, um, but I always find occasionally there's a need for it. So with the solar installation and battery upgrades that we're looking at coming soon, I've got a feeling this might be useful for testing that and maybe it's useful for testing the kids batteries and their toys something like that anyway and then finally smallest purchase a replacement for the cigarette lighter up front neither of us smoke no intention of doing so so we're going to take the cigarette lighter out and pop this in which is a dual usb charger uh, i've seen the installation online doesn't look too hard and um, so I'm, I'm happy to give that a go this was also about five pounds for the connector delivered so there we go, three new things to play with, and I'll just give you a quick update on two other things I've been meaning to talk about. Okay, the first thing was a stereo. Now I've managed to sell some more things, and I'm up to about £200 in terms of budget, which is just enough probably to buy the cheapest touchscreen model on Amazon that I've been looking at. However, funds as they are, petrol prices and diesel prices as they are, the money's on hold for the moment. So that £200 is banked, and I'm hanging on to this for a little bit longer to make sure I get the model that I want. The only issue is I've got speakers that sound like headphones. So what, regardless of how good my entertainment system is here, it's never gonna sound right until we sort those speakers out too. The other update is regarding this window here. Now, if you've watched our first video vlog, you'll know that within hours of buying it, one of our little squirrels managed to snap a bracket on the inside of that window and ruin it. We had a quote, it came from Caravan Crazy Online. The guy's very kindly quoted for me. However, the cost was 474, including that. So that little window, it's going to stay like that for a little bit longer. Hello. Right. Welcome to the cab, by the way. Following on from uh, the rather odd smells we had in our last trip, lots of people have talked about problems we might be having with our batteries, in particular leisure battery, although we have two batteries in the front here. So in this Fiat 
Bucati van, we've got our leisure battery under here, um, which we, uh, I, I don't actually know how to access this. It's covered by this chair and I'm assuming, I can't get to it uh, around the back or from the front. So I'm assuming the chair probably comes off the end of that, but I'll look that up. The other battery that we've got is the main car battery. And that lives under this panel in the floor, which might come up. That was easy. Here in the floor, I've got what I assume is our main car battery. Let's give you a look at that. Uh, come over here, because you can't see anything from over there. So, there's the car battery in the floor. We can leave that exposed on the, for now. And then inside there is our leisure battery, our only leisure battery at the moment until we get our system put in. So, what happens is um, if these are fairly fully charged, then as the charge comes through to them from the engine as it's running, if the charge isn't managed in some format, then it gives too much power to the batteries. And if the batteries haven't got um, the ability to take that power on, uh, they expel it through heat and gas. And the smell that we had last week could have been gas escaping from one of these two batteries. Apparently you'll be able to feel it through the heat and obviously we'll smell it once we get going. At the moment the van doesn't smell of anything, so we'll need to take it on a test drive to see what happens. Quick word, if you are going to lift your tray off the floor, maybe put it outside on the floor rather than on your seat. Welcome back to the front of the van. Now, next on my list is preparing for winter. When we bought the van, it came with a great big thick silver duvet that we could wrap around the outside of the screen and that worked great in the summer, although in the summer, the van was warm enough that we didn't really need cover. It was more a privacy thing. And in the winter, uh, it gets wet. I think dampness inside or moisture, concentrated moisture anywhere in the van, even in the boot where there's little ventilation, is probably not a good thing. So these are, internal blinds they're uh, reflective rather than being uh, thick like a thick duvet so you get the blinds themselves and a whole load of rubber suckers oops dropped one right so i'm gonna have a go at fixing it and see how easy it is first i've got to find the one i dropped okay well it seems easy enough there's a load of ringlets around the outside of the blinds and each of those ringlets gets a sucker but which is the outside silver or black am i keeping heat in Yes, so silver on the inside, I guess. Unfortunately, some of the stuff you buy from uh, international websites doesn't always come with um, instructions. And if they are instructions, they're not always in English or well drawn. Maybe I'll check this out online first. One moment. Okay, so I've had a little look on Amazon. And interestingly, they all demo it with the silver on the outside. And in my head, I'm not entirely sure if that's right, but. I'm no scientist, or electrician, or motorhome expert, or, or much else to be honest. So, don't listen to me, go and check it out yourself. But I'm going to have a go putting this up with the silver side out first and see how that goes. I might be here a while because I'm still on the first sucker. It's got little arms that once they push it through, hold it air in place. Because of course when this comes to being pulled off, you're going to need something to resist it being pulled all the way through. So, only another 20 to go. Right, I've got all my little plastic suckers on. Two things to note. What's nice is it comes in three separate parts, so the two sides and the front. Now with the external, it's all one part uh, and it's quite a lot to handle. If one side starts to fall down, they all fall down. So three separate parts might be easy to handle. The only other thing I noticed is that there's exactly the right number of suckers. So if you drop one like I did, luckily I recovered it, or you break one because they're not particularly thick, then you're probably going to be a little bit stuffed. There's no spares is what I'm saying. Right, let's see how well they stick to these grimy windows of mine. So, as you can see, they go up fairly easily, although they do, one or two of them, uh, are having an issue sticking. Now I'm not sure if that's a product fault um, or if it's really just to do with dirty windows. So I probably need to give those, to be fair, the windows are good clean and even, you know, I could lick the suckers and stick them on for better adhesion. One good thing I did notice though was on the, on the main screen, in front of the big windscreen one, 
Once you've stuck the ones across the top, you can basically tuck the bottom ones in. Maybe use the corner ones just to stretch it out. So if you do ever manage to pull off or break one of the suckers, you can probably use one of the low ones, like down here, to replace it with, and then that will uh, make the whole thing last a bit longer. But on the whole, it felt really cozy and it was really easy to put up. I did have to remove my dash cam though, it's obviously not designed for that, it's designed to go around your rear view mirror, but not anything else you might have stuck to the windscreen. So, so far, so good. So for a proper test, I'll need to clean the windows and take it out on our next escape. If you want to know where I got this, I'll put a link in the description below. Good evening everybody, welcome to the van. Now, uh, we've managed to coerce our 17 year old into looking after the other three boys, uh, allowing B and I to nip out for a test run with the van after following that bad smell that we had last, on our last trip to give it a proper run. When I got into the van, there's no smell at all. I think we're going to head to Portia Castle. So we've already done about four miles and there's been no smell at all so far. So what I'll probably do now is just check if uh, the batteries feel warm and have a general sniff about. But at the moment, it smells all right. And very shortly, it's going to smell of Chinese takeaway. So I'm not sure if we'll be able to smell that smell. <laughs> Mind you saying that, it was so rough, I don't think you'd be able to cover it up with anything. Okay, that's the bathroom clear. Let's try. Oh dear, traveling. By the way, this is the best sound ever. I am getting in it. Uh, there is a bit of a whiff over here actually. I think that's where we've left some old water. Okay, sink smells a little bit, but nothing like the eggy smell that we had on that trip either. So since that last trip, I have cleaned out the toilet cassette, so that's got fresh chemicals in. We have emptied the grey waste, so there may not be any smells emanating from there, if those were the cause of the horrid smell last time. That just leaves the batteries. We've done four miles, like I said, and it's okay so far. We've got about another four miles to go before we can stop and eat, and then we'll have about eight miles drive back. So we'll see what happens. Oh my goodness, I like the way this glows. Now this doesn't look very idyllic now, but during the daytime, this uh, castle street running up to Porchester Castle is absolutely beautiful. It's very narrow and very popular. Uh, we were hoping that the castle might be illuminated, but it isn't. Now this castle is fantastic. It has Roman walls on the outside. So super old ancient walls. And then the central castle um, was a Norman construction, but it has some really good history. None of it I have to hand right now and you can't even see it but we're just going to eat our noodles and somewhere over there is the sea. And a sign reminding us there's no overnight sleeping or camping in vehicles. Anyway, time for dinner. What's the verdict? It's really nice. Yeah, it's really nice because I know they understand that vegan food isn't the same as vegetarian. But also it's quite nice because it's quiet. Um, there are no kids and there are no dogs. <laughs> so, I don't to do myself apart from me. Mmm, that's really good. And as I always say, stuff that I don't have to cook always tastes a lot better. Well, as always, I hoovered mine up. I mm. always eat much faster than Daz, who is uh, much more dignified. I'm more like a tortoise. Mm. I'll probably live longer too. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I think that's how it works. Mm. Well, actually, in terms of statistics... <laughs> <laughs> I understand that recently, um, Porchester or Fairham Borough Council started charging for a lot of their car parks. And as you can see, sadly, even though it's really quiet here and there's hardly anyone parked here there's no overnight sleeping or camping in vehicles what a shame okay so now we are going to see if the leisure battery has heated up at all um fingers crossed it's okay because it didn't smell on the route down here let's just hope that is the case right there's a little bit of light it is actually pitch black there's not even any street lighting here so it's quite eerie and um, so we've got the main car battery 
here, right under my feet. I was just thinking, we've picked the perfect time to do this. What, at night? Yeah, at night time. <laughs> I do blame myself for that. I was on the phone until half an hour. Ow, there's that thing. <laughs> so, what we're we looking at, Dad? So, this is our um, car battery. Now, this was, when we went to view the van, um, we went on a test drive, pulled up, and then the guy went to repark it in his drive, and it wouldn't start. So, he agreed to buy a new battery. So, this was new only in about June this year. Now, to the touch, that is not warm at all. That's after um, nine miles, which might not sound very far uh, long, but we have been on a motorway on those nine miles, so we've gone quite fast. And the problem that happened on our last trip happened within five minutes. So within... It was two minutes it started to two, smell. Two minutes, there you go. So probably within three miles of leaving the house. So we've done nine miles so far. That's not a problem. The other battery... This is the one that everybody said it would possibly be the problem, the le leisure battery. Yeah, I can't, it's not easy to access this one. It's under this chair. But I can, um... So if it was to explode, it would hit me, <laughs> yeah. my backside first. Yeah, you'd go... I mean, I have got an explosive backside, but that was that's not what I'm thinking. Okay, so this is... This is not hot either. So we've got another, obviously we've got another nine miles to go back home and we can do another test then. But, so, so far, the bathroom smells like a bathroom. The sink smells a little bit of old uh, dirty water, which we've poured away. And the two batteries um, are cooler than the cucumber. So uh, the only smell in a motorhome at the moment is uh, of the Chinese takeaway. That's really reassuring for me because the smell when we last went was within moments of us leaving the home and so many comments suggested that it might be the leisure battery and it was quite frightening really. So that's good news. Which means whoever commented on our video suggesting it was the grey waste, I think that's what it was. We had some grey waste left. It had been there for over a week. It happened the second we moved so I think it was possibly agitated. I could hear some gurgling going on. So I think I'm going to take the advice of some lovely people that have suggested all kinds of interesting things for, from soda crystals and hot water to pouring Coca-Cola down the sink. We're going to give everything a try and hopefully give it a clean. So we've literally road tested the van this evening and thankfully uh, there doesn't seem to be any smells emanating from the kitchen area. The bathroom, I can't say it smells of nothing, but it smells of what the bathroom normally smells of, which is fine. Uh, chemicals and such. And we've checked out both the car battery and the leisure battery this evening after a nine mile buzz along the motorway. And there doesn't seem to be any heat or smells emanating from there either. So it's a tiny bit of a mystery, but, um, but certainly Thanks to all the comments. We've had lots and lots of comments directing us to different things to look at, particularly around the grey waste and the batteries. We're now 10 times wiser uh, and we'll pay attention to those things, but it's just a shame that Stampy appears to be okay right now. Um, it's a shame. <laughs> it's a shame, I oh know, it's a shame that Stampy seems to be okay because we could have um, carried on with the plans that we had this week to take the kids uh, and dogs away. So yeah, we have cancelled our trip this week, so it's mission aborted sadly. We did that because of our really concerning odour in our motorhome and we were really worried that it could be our leisure battery about yeah. to do something rather alarming underneath my seat. Uh, Daryl probably would have quite liked that to happen. Maybe he planned it, I don't know. I think, I think the thing was, when, you, when, you, when I read about the batteries and what happens to them and how if they're getting too much charge that they're able to take and the heat and the gas boost, the, the, the gas that comes off of the batteries um, can be an irritant and obviously in a com uh, and can affect your throat, I think, and in a confined space with you know, not enough oxygen, it can potentially be very dangerous, perhaps even lethal. So, yeah, so we've got children and dogs to worry about, not just yeah, ourselves. So it's a real concern. It was a real concern, so we knew we'd have to cancel. But we've put those plans on hold for a little bit and hopefully we can go and enjoy that trip away really, really soon. But it's reassuring to know that it isn't our battery and it was probably our grey waste. So for now, it looks like we've got the green light to take Stampy out again. We're looking forward to our next escape, so we'll see you then. If you enjoyed our video, send us a like and if you've got any tips or advice, drop it in the comments below. And until our next escape, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.